Hey everybody, Jace Bosman for HuntStand. Want to talk to you today about two words that uh, really scared the crap out of me, and that's target panic. Um, I hate even uttering those words above a whisper, but uh, here's the thing about target panic: is that it comes in all different shapes, sizes, forms, and severities. And over the course of your shooting career, uh, you're probably going to, if you haven't already dealt with it um, at some point, or maybe are dealing with it right now, going to deal with target panic. And it's, it's a very frustrating feeling. Um, for me, uh, about three years ago, I got to the point where it was so bad during my practice sessions that I couldn't even put my pin close to a dot. I couldn't even uh, let my pin float on an area and just execute a shot. I was jerking the trigger, punching the trigger, banging the trigger, uh, a lot of times um, with my pin nowhere close. And that caused, of course, bad accuracy and all kinds of frustration for me as an archer. So I knew something had to change. I knew I had to do something different because I went into that fall and it was miserable for me. I missed some animals. Uh, I wounded an animal and I'm not afraid to tell you guys that I'm not afraid to share my shortcomings with you because uh, archery is all about learning it's all about education it's all about helping one another but I knew something had to change and so I started doing some research and I found out after reading multiple things that it takes about 21 days to break a habit uh, it takes about 21 days to reset the computer and start something new so I made a change and that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna talk to you about how to get over target panic and put it behind you for good. And if you follow this system, if you really stay dedicated and tried and true to this system, you are absolutely going to be able to do this. So the first thing that we're gonna do, you need to find, I don't care if it's a bad target, a block target, it doesn't matter to me, um, get a can of black spray paint and take one side of that target and paint that target face so there are no dots, spots, marks, zilch on that thing. If you're using a bag target, uh, use a staple gun, use some tacks, whatever, and you can cover it with construction paper or something along those lines. Once you have that target face blanked out, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to set that target at 10 yards. And you're going to stand 10 yards from that target. Remember, there are no aiming points on that target. Then what you're going to do is you're going to focus on developing a system. And that system starts, of course, with getting into your grip, acquiring the target visually, making a smooth draw, crawling into anchor, finding those anchor points, and settling in. Now, once we settle in on that target, we are not going to fire a single arrow. Not one. You are going to hold until exhaustion, and then you are simply going to let the bow down. You are going to repeat this process 10 times and I'd like to see you do it three or four times a day. So a group of 30 or 40, think of weightlifting. Now, make sure you give yourself plenty of rest between each of these. It's just like a bench, bench set or something like that. You've gotta let the muscles time to recover. We don't wanna get injured. You can even turn your bow poundage down if you want to. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna go through our process and we're going to let that pin float on that blank target face with no spot to focus on we learn and start to trust our pin float and realize that our pin is going to move back and forth across that target, but our subconscious mind is always dragging that pin back to a point where we know we want the arrow to impact. Now, if you're worried, you're going to uh, trigger the bow. Uh, I tried working on this with my father-in-law last weekend and three times he ended up shooting the bow. We don't want to shoot, so what you can do is you can manipulate your release, set it so heavy that it simply can't go off. If you can't do that with your release, get a good training aid release that will just that, that it won't fire no matter what. Then that takes any chance of you inadvertently or getting some anxiousness and feeling the need to punch the trigger. Over time, over these five, four or five days of doing this, doing doing this repetitively, going to 10 yards, drawing the bow, settling the pin, holding till exhaustion, letting down. Your muscle memory, not only are you going to get stronger, but you're going to learn, your brain is going to start to learn what it, what it looks like to just let your pin float on a spot and aim and aim and aim and aim while you do nothing but stay strong in the front and strong in the back. We're still pushing into that riser um, with, our, with our bow hand and we're still driving the elbow backward. Now, the bow can't go off if you set it right and, or if you stay away from the trigger so you don't have to worry about triggering an arrow. After we do that for several days, four, five days, our next step is we are going to go back to that target, again, still a blank face, no spots, dots, none of that. 
and we are going to stand at a distance of 10 yards and we are going to go through our process only this time after we set our release back to where we know it needs to be we are actually going to fire an arrow now we are not going to fire an arrow that's the important thing the release is going to fire the arrow you have to learn to let your release fire your bow let that release do what it was designed to do give up control trust your pin floats and let the release fire the bow now again you're at 10 yards there's no spot or dot on the target it doesn't matter where you hit so just focus on form strong in the front strong in the back trusting that pin float on that target and executing a good push and pull motion until that release fires and that arrow hits somewhere on the target if the arrow goes off and it takes you by surprise where you're kind of have a moment you're doing it right if you manipulate that release and only you will know you have to be honest with yourself you're doing it wrong and you are starting to regress already we have to let the release fire the bow now we are going to repeat this process at 10 yards with no dot spot anything multiple times over the course of the day for again another four or five days if at any point during this you feel like you are starting to manipulate the release and any of that is coming back go back up to 10 yards lock the release back down and go through those steps that we mentioned earlier now you've been shooting your bow the release is starting to just go off things are starting to happen and your confidence is starting to grow this is great now what we're going to do is we are going to stay with that same blank target face only over the course of these next four or five days what we're going to do is we're going to shoot three arrow groups from distances of 10 20 30 and 40 yards no further than 40 yards again there is not one aiming point on this target at all not one why because we don't care where we hit all we want to continue to train our mind and body to do is go through our process, get the bow back, climb into anchor, and let that release fire the bow while we are staying strong in the front with our bow arm and strong in the back. And when that shot breaks, it is where it is. We're trusting our pin float on that target because again, if you trust your pin float and learn what pin movement looks like and just focus on the art of aiming, that pin is constantly dragging back and forth across a very small area on that target. Now, you can do this as much as you want as long as you're not manipulating the release, as long as there's no anxiety. If you're feeling joy, if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, this is working, I'm just shooting and I'm hitting the target every time and it doesn't matter if I'm on the left corner, the right corner, or the center, again, don't shoot an arrow into the target and then try to chase that arrow. That is a mistake. Why? Because again, we're going back to thinking we have to put the pin on something and hold it dead steady. The best archer in the world cannot hold his or her pin dead steady on target. You have to learn to trust your pin float. Now, as we continue to progress here, the last thing you want to do, especially as we're getting close to bow season, is put a dot or a spot on that target. And I've seen a lot of guys take a uh, orange circle, a little can of spray paint, and put it on a 3D target. Um, I guess that's okay at some point, but not where you're at right now, not for what we want to do. All right, so what we're going to do over these next four to five days is we're going to put the blank target away and we're going to get a 3D target. And 3D targets have gotten super economical over the years. And now what you're going to do is very simple. You're going to set that 3D target up in an area where you can shoot and you are going to execute shots. Now, not 10 ring shots, not 12 ring shots, not whatever shots. We are focusing on letting the pin float on the vital area of the animal while pushing and pulling until the arrow breaks, just like you trained yourself to do on the blank target face. Only this time, we're gonna spend these days shooting at a 3D target, again, at distances of 20, 30, and 40 yards. As long as you're feeling confident, and as long as you're feeling good, and as long as the release is firing the bow, you can do this often. I recommend you do it often. If any time during this, you manually punch that trigger or you start to feel that anxiety swell up inside of you, even just a little bit, stop, take a break, go back in, set the release heavy, go up to 10 yards, draw and hold, draw and hold. It just brings that muscle memory back. Lastly, you're feeling good. You're feeling confident, shots are breaking and things are going good. Go ahead and stretch it out a little bit stretch out your distances as far as you'd like shoot it 
50, 60, 70, 80 yards. As long as you remember that the shots you were making at 20 and 30 and 40 are the same you make at further distances. Nothing changes. Strong in the front, strong in the back, let the release fire the bow. If you do this for a period of 21 days, you're going to beat target panic for good, you're going to put it behind you, and you're going to be ready to help others. Thanks for taking the time to check out the video.